Hello, this is the very first of many pharmacology videos for our online component of our course. So how this is going to work is we are going to divide up all of our units 1 through 10 into uh, many shorter videos and each video will cover some of the objectives found in your textbook, the required textbook, which is this one, which you bought, hopefully purchased from the bookstore. And it is more of an outline if you've thumbed through it. It's not really a textbook, but it's an outline. And the lectures that we give follow this outline in as close as I can to the same order as the text. Um, every now and again I'll deviate, but I'll, men I'll explain it to you when we get there. So this unit, the first unit, is just an introduction to the class, and it's kind of laying the groundwork. Actually, units one through three are really pretty much introduction units, kind of giving us the background information we're going to need in order to get into the individual drugs when we get there later on. So I'm going to run you through sort of an introduction to the class, give you the, gr the ground rules and those kinds of things as we go. So this class is, of course, pharmacology, and it's the study of drugs. That's what pharmacology is. Um, and what this class, the goal of this class is really not to tell you every single drug that there is on the market, because there's just not enough time for that. But what I would like to do in this class is to give you the theory and the concepts that you would need to ultimately understand how to safety, safely pardon me, and effectively use drugs therapeutically. So we aren't going to be spending a lot of time memorizing, well we're going to spend no time actually, memorizing lists of drugs because I don't believe that that's the way to do this. But what we are going to do is we're going to talk about drugs in classes. For example, when we get to the cardiovascular unit, we'll talk about the antihypertensive agents, and those would be all the different drugs that can bring down the blood pressure, and we're going to arrange them in class, um, like, for example, the beta blockers, the alpha blockers, etc. So we're going to be talking about classes of drugs, because that's really the best way to learn pharmacology. Once you understand the classes, then as you, into, as you dive into individual drugs, you'll have a place to sort of a file to put them. So that's how I do this. Everybody approaches it differently, but that's how I choose to teach this class. So we'll talk about drug classes. We will talk about prototype drugs, and I'll explain to you what that means in just a few minutes. Um, and then we're also going to kind of figure out how these drugs work and hopefully recognize and appreciate that while drugs can help be very helpful, they can also be harmful. And so we'll run through some of the toxic and or harmful effects of medications as well. So that's kind of how this is going to be laid out. Um, so like I said, the goal is to pretty much set the foundation. So my objective here is when you leave this course and go into whatever it is you're going to do next, whether it be nursing, physician's assistants, pharmacy school, wherever you're headed, medical school, you'll have the groundwork that you need to really understand these kinds of these medications. Um, I do this kind of from a pretty firm physiology basis. So I assume that you know physiology already, that you've learned physiology. Physiology is actually a prerequisite for this course. So everybody that's enrolled has at least taken physiology sometime in the fairly recent past, hopefully. Um, so we're going to talk about drugs in context with diseases, because I think that's the best way to learn these this topic, and it's what makes it stick. So we'll talk about how drugs work. We're going to talk about w at what tissues drugs are um, uh, effective or, use, or, or operational. Um, we'll talk a little bit about receptors. We'll talk about anticipated responses, side effects, toxic effects, those kinds of things for individual drug classes. Again, not for all individual drugs. So to get going on this video, I want to kind of just sort of think about what this topic is all about. And so pharmacology is derived, the word pharmacology comes from actually two Greek words, as do most um, medical terms from Greek and or Latin. So the first is pharmacon, and that is um, referring to either a medicine or a drug. And then logos is the study. So basically, this is a study of medicines. Um, but more 
directly pharmacology is not just the study of medicines on them on their own but more appropriately how medicines or drugs interact with a living organism that's really what we're interested in so a drug is just any substance and this is a super broad term so a drug is any substance that is taken to either prevent cure or most frequently reduced symptoms of a medical condition. There are very few drugs that are actually curative. In most cases, what drugs are used for is symptom management. And we'll kind of get more into that as we go. So this term drug is broad, right? It's, you know, in a in a kind of an academic setting, what a drug is, is it can be a chemical con compound. It can also be a natural product that produce an effect in an organism, right? So in, in the clinical context, we think of a drug as something that has, a, has a, um, a therapeutic use. Like for example, a drug, an antihypertensive agent would be a drug that would be therapeutically used to lower the blood pressure. So that's really probably the most helpful way to kind of think about drugs. Um, and drugs in most cases are going to have a specific action. And what that means is they have a target, a specific target. And the drug is going to influence that target and the interaction between the drug and the target will be what then causes our clinical response or our therapeutic response. So it makes sense that drugs would be designed to be a, to act at a specific target. The more specific the drug, and the term we use for that is specificity, so the more specificity the drug has, the better the drug. And you can kind of think of it as a, target, as a targeted response. The more targeted the response, the more control we have over the response, and therefore the better the drug. If you gave a drug that interfaced with every receptor in the body or num numerous receptors, you would have all kinds of actions happening and it would be really hard to sort of control that response. So the more specificity the drug has, the better the drug. In some cases, there are drugs that are not very specific and we'll get into this in the coming lectures, um, but those are drugs that are not used as frequently and the reason for that really is because they're not as, they're not as targeted, I think is a good way to think about that. Um, so what do these things do? Right, so well, drugs do one of two things, really. They are going to either augment or block something that would normally happen, right? So what they do not do is they do not cause something totally new that would never have happened on its own to happen, right? So they basically facilitate a response that would have happened anyway, maybe faster or maybe more robust, but it's a response that would have happened normally or they block a response from occurring. And so that's really the way they work, right? Um, and so we're not gonna see these new and different things happening by when we administer medications. Okay, so they're gonna modify an existing response. Okay, so the study of pharmacology can get broken down. It's a pretty big topic, right? So it can get broken down into different branches, and each of these branches are sort of concerned with a unique portion of this particular to topic. Excuse me. So the first is pharmaceutics. I'm going to talk about some of these in more detail. Pharmaceutics is really where we are thinking if we're in the drug formulation business, right? So this is like the research and development phase of pharmacology. Then we have pharmacotherapeutics. This is the clinical part, right? This is where we're looking at drugs and how they interact with humans. So it's the study of drugs and humans. This is what we're gonna spend the majority of our time on. Pharmacodynamics is how the, how the drug is actually working. And the term we use in pharmacology for how drugs work is, is the mechanism of action. And you're gonna hear that on and on and over and over and over again. So the mechanism of action oftentimes is abbreviated MOA, and that is referring to essentially how the drug produces its effect. And that gets broken down into different components, which we'll get into. Then there's pharmacokinetics. We're gonna spend a lot of time on this as well. And this has a lot to do with what the body is actually doing to the drug, 
And that also gets broken down, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Toxicology, toxicology, pardon me, is pretty straightforward, and that's just the study of the toxic effects produced by drugs. And then there's a sort of a new field um, that's developing, and it's called pharmacogenomics. And this is the link between genetics and pharmacology, right? Or ha and this is becoming this is a, this is an area that's sort of exploding, where we're looking at genetic variability from patient to patient, and how these genetic this genetic variability will affect how effective that drug is or is not in, in, in an individual. So it's very individualized or personalized. All right, so let's talk about these individually for a minute. First again is pharmacotherapeutics, or not the first, but the first we're, the first that we're going to spend time with. And pharmacotherapeutics, again, is really looking at the clinical aspect of this. So this is where we're looking at the study of drugs that are being used to prevent disorders or and or and most often, I should say, um, uh, deal with symptoms of disease. So this, again, is the clinical aspect. Pharmacodynamics, again, this was the mechanism of action and observable effects of drugs. And this can be pretty, can get down into some pretty small chem biochemistry. So this is both biochemical and physiological. We're not going to do a lot of the biochemical. We're not going to do a lot of molecular biology here. But we are going to talk quite a bit about physiology and how these drugs affect normal physiology or interface with normal physiology. So this is the how and the why of, the, of drugs and how they act on the body. So this pharmacodynamics um, is inclusive of looking at interaction between foreign chemicals and living tissues, um, both at the molecular and the physiologic level. Whoops. Um, pharmacokinetics here is again, looking at how the drugs move through the body. So pharmacokinetics gets kind of broken down into different components. And these are words that we're gonna hear a lot about and we're gonna talk quite a bit about all of these different um, branches of pharmacokinetics in unit number three. But basically what we're looking at here is a drug is administered and then we're looking at how it ultimately gets to where it's gonna act. So in most cases, drugs are going to act by interfacing with a receptor. And that means that the drug has to get to the receptor. In most cases, the receptor for the drug is not where you put the drug. So by far and away, the most common route of administration of drugs is oral administration, meaning that you swallow a pill. And when you swallow a pill, it's going to go down, right? You put it in your mouth, you swallow, it's going to go down your esophagus, it's going to land in the stomach, and it's either going to get absorbed in the stomach, not very frequently, or it's going to continue on down to the small intestine and get absorbed there. So most drugs are going to be either absorbed in the, um, with secondary to, to oral administration, they're going to be absorbed either in the stomach or the small intestine. That's not where they're going to act most of the time. They've got to get to where they have to act. So absorption is how it gets from where you put it essentially to the bloodstream. And then it gets distributed throughout the bloodstream looking for its receptors, right? So it gets distributed. And so it's going to either stay in the blood or maybe it's going to move into some other body fluids, extracellular fluid or interstitial fluid, pardon me, um, or it can go into the fat, which is quite common for drugs that are highly fat soluble, or it can go to the brain. So the, the movement of the drug from one place to another is referred to as distribution. And drugs are distributed differently depending on the nature of the drugs. Some drugs are water soluble and they just float around dissolved in the, in the plasma. Other drugs need to be carried, right? They have to be bound to something. So they get transported bound to a protein and you can see that transported to plasma, bound to plasma protein. So we're gonna talk all about this later on. And all drugs are kind of different in terms of how they do this. Um, and then we want to metabolize these drugs. And most of that happens in the liver. You can see on the slide there on the bottom right. Most drug metabolism it happens in the liver. Sometimes this is referred to as biotransformation. Metabolism and biotransformation can be used synonymously. Some drugs get deactivated in the liver. Other drugs get activated in the liver. And so we'll learn a little bit about that. That would all be referred to as metabolism or biotransformation. And then ultimately, we're going to need to excrete this drug. And most of the time, we're going to excrete the drug via the urinary system, via the kidneys. 
but we also can excrete some dr some drug by via our skin and there's different ways to do uh, GI in our GI tract so there's different ways so basically the pharmacokinetics in a sort of a general sense is referring to what the body does to the drug once you put it in there what the body does to it and that would be absorption distribution metabolism and excretion um, I'm going to come back to this slide later <clears throat> on another presentation. Uh, and so then toxicology, this is fairly straightforward. This is another branch, and it's specific to the harmful st the study of the harmful effects of, the dr of drugs. I can't emphasize enough that all drugs, all of them, have, a har have harmful effects. There is not any exception to that. Right? Some are going to have more harmful effects than others, but all the drugs, even drugs like we consider safe, like aspirin, for example, which is a very safe drug, but it has some harmful effects, right? And so we have to be aware of these harmful effects. And when it comes to selecting medications, the question that has to be asked oftentimes is, do the beneficial effects of this medication in this instance outweigh the harmful effects? Most of the time, the answer to that is yes, but sometimes the answer to that is no. There's certain drugs, and it doesn't make them bad drugs. Like um, what I'm thinking about right now is the chemo some of the chemotherapeutic agents, which are hugely toxic drugs, obviously, because their job is to kill, you know, eukaryotic cells that are rapidly dividing, of which there's many, um, and. It's sometimes a hard call to make with some of these chemotherapeutic agents. Do the beneficial effects outweigh the harmful effects? Sometimes it's an easy call to make, you know, like, for example, a penicillin, which is an antibiotic, which is um, targets the bacterial cell wall. And so you can give lots of penicillin, provided that there, there's not resistance to the penicillin, <clears throat> um, with very few detrimental effects. But there oftentimes are going to be some. So... That's sort of what the field of toxicology is all about. And then we've got pharmacogenomics, which is this new one, right? This is new and very interesting. And this is looking at genomic testing to predict how an individual will respond to a drug based on their genetics. This is so unbelievably cool. Um, so there's a couple areas where we're really focusing on pharmacogenomics, and that is in the arena of drug metabolism and also drug responsiveness. So what we do know about people is that there's a lot of genetic variability in terms of their enzymatic pathways. And when we have the ability to look at genetic variability, which we do now with genomic se DNA sequencing, which is easy to do and pretty inexpensive, um, we have the ability to predict if there is any kind of genetic information that would set this particular person up for an, an adverse drug reaction. So essentially what the pharmacogenomics is allowing, and this is relatively new, but what it's allowing us to do is to be able to sort of head off an adverse reaction before it happens. Um, at where they're using a lot of this work, where they're using a lot of this genomic testing is in the arena of cancer therapy. And the reason for that, and the reason why that's important in this context is because a lot of, like I said previously, a lot of these chemotherapeutic agents are really toxic. And for some people, they're more toxic than others. And what we've learned is the genetics of the person has a lot to do with how toxic potentially this drug will be. If they can't metabolize it and it stays at a higher level in their blood, they can have potentially adverse reactions as a result of that. So to be able to, to essentially have this information before you administer the drug, that, would, that, that changes the way we select certain medications. So this is a very new and interesting field. Another um, place where this information is useful is in terms of an individual's responsiveness to, an, uh, to a drug. And I'm gonna give you an example here of this. And so there's a drug called Verceptin that was produced by a, that's manufactured by a company called Genetech and another company called Daco Corporation. Um, but essentially what Verceptin was is a drug designed for breast cancer. And so um, we'll talk more about 
drug design and drug studies and all of that later on. But essentially, this drug, Verceptin, was de was developed to treat breast cancer. And so in the clinical trial phases, they, you know, gave the drugs in small amounts, uh, or pardon me, they gave the drugs to healthy individuals. You know, first they did the animal testing and all of that. Then they did the healthy individuals small sample of healthy individuals just to test for safety. Then they expanded the, the pool to people who actually needed the drug, not a whole bunch, but people who needed the drug. And then they get to the end of this, which is well, called um, phase three clinical trials, where they give the drug to a lot of patients. In this case, it would be breast cancer patients. And then, you know, we'll look at the data. And so with this particular example, this drug Verceptin, when they started to analyze the data in this large pool of people that were given the drug, it didn't look so good. It didn't seem like it was working that much better than placebo and or the previous drug for this particular type of cancer. And so it didn't look like it was going to have much utility in the treatment of breast cancer. But what then happened is they decided to look at the genetics of these women with breast cancer. And it turned out that women that had um, what we call epidermal growth factor receptor 2, or the HER2 receptor, so they were HER2 positive, that the women that had those genetics that had that particular type of cancer, and so the, basically where they were looking at the genetics of the tumor, if they had that particular type, HER2 positive breast cancer, then when they were given this drug Verceptin, it significantly reduced their, their chances of metastatic breast cancer, so breast cancer that's spreading. So when they were able to analyze the genetics of the tumor, they were able to see that, oh yeah, if, they, if the tumor has this, these genetics, then this drug is very effective. But when you have a bunch of breast cancer women, all those tumors are different, right? So they have some that are HER2 positive and some that are HER2 negative. The HER2 negatives, this drug didn't do anything for. But the HER2 positive, it was a significant, which, which tends to be a pretty aggressive cancer. This particular drug was significant. So that's another way that we're able to use this genomic information, right? One, predicting how a drug may potentially be metabolized, but also, and probably equally as important, is looking at how responsive an individual patient will be to this drug based on the, the, the genetics of either, in this case, the tumor or their, their own personal genomics. So it's a pretty interesting field right now. Okay, so um, as we dive in, we are going to talk about drug classes, and for each drug class studied, we will be talking about the pharmacotherapeutics, which are the clinical uses of the drug. We're going to be talking about the toxicology, which is the harmful use effects of the drug. We're going to be talking about pharmacokinetics, how the drug's absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and ultimately excreted. And we'll also be talking about the mechanism of action. Not so much on the biochemical side, but quite a bit on the physiologic side. So I'm going to end this video here and we'll pick up the next one with our next topic.